Hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here. And today, as the year 2023 draws to a close, we are going to take a look back at the year in the game and talk about the top five ships of 2023. And just to clarify here, I usually do two end of the year list videos. The top five ships of the year and the top five best ships of the year. Today's video is the top five ships of 2023. What that means is that we're going to go over the ships that were the most impactful, the ones that personify 2023 in World of War ships. They're not necessarily the best ships of this year. Again, that is going to be a separate top five video. They're just the ships that, you know, personify what happened this year in the game it's like times persons of the year it doesn't have to be a good person or someone that did something good just someone that was you know notable for the year in question and that's what's happening here with these ships before we get into that however last night i did go on the salt ships and scuttlebutt podcast as I've been on quite a few times, so if you want to hear me and Captain Greeny talk about the current patch, the Kitakami, and ran about museum ships for a couple hours, please go check that out. Link is in the description down below. But let's go ahead and get on into it, shall we, ladies and gentlemen? Starting out with number five, which is the American Tier 9 Premium Battleship, the Illinois. The Illinois is a ship that was released earlier in 2023, and my god, what a goofy ship this ship is. Uh, she was on a list not that long ago, but this is kind of a sign of the times in my opinion, because the game is getting up there in age. It just celebrated its 8th anniversary. Not many games last that long. And this is what we're probably going to be getting more of as the years go on with World of Warships. More of these zany outlandish designs. I mean, the Illinois, if you don't know or if you can't tell by the background footage, it's essentially an Iowa with a bunch of Des Moines guns bolted to the deck. A bunch of 203 millimeter guns and, of all things, quad turrets because quad turrets is... It's just the new hotness in the game. I mean, good God, we've had the Illinois, the Mecklenburg, the Michelangelo, um, just to name a couple at the top of my head that, you know, now we have quad guns, right? But yeah, it, it's a battleship with a literal cruiser armament, not like 305 or 310 millimeter guns, actual 230 millimeter 8 inch guns, right? It's just such a ridiculous ship. And again, we're going to be getting more and more of these outlandish ideas as the years go on because there's only so many actual ships of certain classes that were built because it takes a lot of resources to of course you know design a ship build a ship ships are these huge massive complicated machines and it's not like tanks where yes you obviously need a lot of technical support and resources to make a tank but many more countries can develop their own tank than they can develop, you know, whole ship classes and such and put them to sea and support them. So they are running out of real life ships to put into the game. So we're going to be seeing more of this. And we started the year off strong with the Illinois. Now, the Illinois is actually a pretty darn good ship, in my opinion, if you do like the Des Moines and Salem or the American Heavy Cruiser playstyle and would like a ship that's a little bit tankier than a Des Moines or a Salem in the current meta, it can definitely work. It has, of course, the same issues with the guns that the Des Moines and Salem do have. They are very floaty shells, so at range, it doesn't really work out that well. But man, when you get in close with the amount of just the, the rate of fire that this thing has, you can burn anyone down that is going to try and sit there and bow tank you if they try to push into you you can load that wonderful mark 8 super heavy ap and just chunk the living crap out of their side armor with this thing's guns because while it might have cruiser guns that american mark 8 super heavy ap shell that thing could put in some work and when you've got 12 guns of it yeah it can get pretty spicy and don't underestimate this thing just because it is a battleship with cruiser guns. But Illinois, completely goofy ship, a sign of the times in my opinion, and an excellent start for this list. 
But going on down now to number four, we have a ship that made um, quite the ripples when she was released and thankfully quickly removed, and that's the Tier 8 Premium British Aircraft Carrier, the Colossus. The Colossus, man, the Colossus is such a stupid aircraft carrier. The Colossus is a, a light carrier, an escort carrier, if you will, but it's all revolving around the rocket planes that she gets. The ship gets these rocket planes that are just absolutely absurd. The rockets on these planes are so crazy. They can completely wipe out a tier 9 or even a tier 10 cruiser if you're not ca watching yourself. If this thing catches you broadside, you're probably going back to port. These rockets are so good and the alpha is so high and they fire so many of them, you can completely clap these guys back to port. Including carriers too. Other carriers. Man, Colossus is a, a wonderful carrier sniper if you get one of those CV players that, you know, they just set their ship to go to some random corner or some random island at the beginning of the match, then they just focus on flying their planes around without paying attention. You can completely wipe them out in one or two runs. And the background footage here, I didn't get the timing just right, so I didn't hit the citadel of the, I think it was the Pobetta that I was going up against, but I still hit his upper armor for like almost 20k and just pens. Yeah. Yeah. So needless to say, the Colossus, when she was released, she was, um, again, the center of quite a bit of attention, and rightfully so, because that is a little bit ridiculous. Now, the rockets do have a very long run-up time. The machine guns fire for way longer than the other AP rockets do. The AP rockets and CVs, if you don't know, they have a very short delay because, of course, AP rockets depend more upon getting the correct angle and being able to bite into the ship's armor a lot more than HE rockets do. HE rockets, as long as you, you know, hit them somewhere, they at least have a chance of starting a fire, but AP rockets, again, it's, it's a bit more involved than just that. But thankfully, the Colossus rockets have a similar delay to that of HE rockets. But again, if you're hugging an island, if you're just, you know... <laughs> there's been cases where players haven't even spawned in yet because they just have poor internet. And before even, you know, it's not, it's not like they're sitting there for like five minutes. You know, maybe they just take them a minute or two to, to load in because they're in it's crappy. And they get in and their ship's destroyed because the Colossus just, you know, flew on over there and simply removed them from the game. So, yeah, a wonderful ship there, Wargaming. Now, to get these crazy rockets, you do have to give up everything. The ship has no armor. It doesn't even have secondaries. The AA is completely laughable. And the rocket and the... Um, I'm sorry, not the rocket. The torpedo and the bomb squadrons are also just kind of okay. They're not really special or anything. But the Colossus, for me, for 2023, it's one of the most gimmicky, gimmicky ships that I I've seen in this game in a minute. Because, again, it's all about those rockets and the gimmick of, oh, if you catch a cruiser broadside, they're dead. But you give up so much of the other squadrons, the CV itself. Oh, and it's slow, too. It has no armor. It's slow and no secondaries and laughable AA. All for this gimmick of these super powerful AP rockets. And, again, how many ships in the game do we have nowadays that their whole personality, the whole ship identity is revolving around a gimmick or two, right? And we're going to be getting, again, more and more of that as we go forward. Speaking of um, gimmicks and things that players very much do not like, going on down to number three, we have the Tier 10 American battleship, the Louisiana. Now, the Louisiana is on this list because, well, first off, it's the pinnacle of the first hybrid tech line that we have in game up until the louisiana lines released every single hybrid ship that we had in game up to this point the kirsars the esa and the tone they were all premium ships right but then wargaming went and snorted a line of the good good and we got a tech line of these hybrid ships and for some reason they decided to disturb the grave of the actual louisiana which was supposed to be a montana class battleship and gave its name to this abomination which just looks ridiculous remember those quad turrets i was talking about with the illinois here we are here with the louisiana sticking an american quad 16 inch gun turret underneath the flight deck because yeah why not um but yeah 
the Louisiana, it is still today a, a really, really strong tier 10 in my opinion. She did thankfully get nerfed because they, <laughs> they released her right around the end of, I forget which clan battle season it was, but it was right around the end of clan battles. And her bombers here, the reticle for them was so small that you could reliably just absolutely dunk on destroyers with the Louisiana with a bit of practice because... Yeah, why not, right? So she absolutely just took the current clan battle season and tossed up that in the air upon her release. And again, thankfully, she, she did get nerfed, and they're still very usable. You can still carpet bomb battleships and heavy cruisers and some light cruisers if you can get the hang of it fairly, you know, easily with a little bit of effort, right? But before, you could easily just dunk on anything you wanted to with those HE bombers. Uh, the main battery guns, you still get 10, 16-inch guns. And, I mean, by Tier 10 standards, yeah, that's down in firepower. But couple that with the uh, planes and the ability to simply, you know, fly anywhere on the map and do consistent damage with those HE bombs. Yeah, you're going to be doing a pretty, pretty consistently well with the Louisiana. Um, again, unless it's a game that ends in like five minutes or something like that. But... Still a really strong ship today, and probably the first of several upcoming hybrid tech lines if I had to put my money down on it. Again, going back to what we were talking about with the Illinois. But yes, speaking of ships that players don't like with gimmicks that they hate, we have our number two slot, which is the one and the only, the U4501. As the submarine menace continues to plague World of Warships, we got one of the most, um, I don't think hotly anticipated is the word or the phrase I'm looking for here, I should say. Um, dreaded, I think, would describe the U-4501. The U-4501 was announced all the way back, I think like 2019, 2020, uh, when submarines were first announced as a thing that were actually coming to the game and the u4501 is a smaller submarine developed by the germans toward the end of the war it was an actual thing that was planned i don't think any were actually built but it did have a fairly high underwater speed of like i think it's like 20 21 22 knots which you know back then that, that was pretty freaking fast and wargaming saw that and doubled the speed up to i think originally she could go like 41 knots so yeah, a sub that can go 41 knots underwater. Physics. A diesel-electric sub, I should say. A World War II era diesel-electric sub that could go uh, 41 knots under the water. Yeah, nah. They did nerf it a little bit. They, they bonked her speed down to 38 knots. And the ship is so small, it basically has no HP. Really, if you get hit once, you, you are, you're going to fill it with depth charges, right? Uh, you get hit twice, you're probably almost dead. It is that frail. Thankfully, they, they got that. It does have a heal, but you have to be on the surface to use it. It does have a decent underwater time of 3 minutes and 30 seconds. It does have the um, backup battery as well, so you can get another 30 seconds out of that. But on the surface, it's slow and only goes 20 knots. The homing, it only has homing torpedoes, so you can't pull off shotguns and absolutely devastate someone for their entire HP pool like the Gato. But overall, a ship that, again, was very much uh, dreaded. And just, again, you know, submarines, a large part of the player base hates these things, and they chose this year to be the year to release the 4501, the submarine that so many were hoping just got shelved and was never going to see the light, of the light of day, but yet, here we are. And again, going forward, submarines, they're going to be, you know, a continuing thing in this game and we're going to be getting more and more lines of them we're going to be getting more and more premiums uh the soviet line was announced we haven't heard much about them since uh since then but they're going to be looking for ways to make these submarine lines stand out from each other and we might again see uh, a similar situation in a future line of subs but again we'll see that whenever it gets here and going on down to number one we have a legendary ship that is the only ship that has ever been removed from this game fully and now she's coming back this year and that is the Kitakami the Japanese cruiser 
that is probably not going to be very good. Now, if you're wondering, Seaward, that's an Asashio. Yes, it is. Why is it an Asashio, not a Kitakami? Well, one, the event's not out yet, and two, I, I, I ain't got the resources yet, alright? So you're going to deal with Asashio gameplay. But anyway, the Kitakami was removed way back in the day because, I mean, th the ship can just fart out like 40-something torpedoes, right? And back in the day when you had friendly fire still, um, needless to say, a few Kitakami players were finding themselves to be permanently pink. And that wasn't very well conducive to a, uh, an enjoyable game, shall we say. So, for that and a couple other balancing reasons, the ship was removed from the game and replaced with the Otago. And now they're reintroduce reintroducing her with uh, quite a few tweaks. For example, she loads her torpedoes like the submarines do now. You only have so many loaders, so it's not like other submarines where once you deploy the torpedoes, your tubes start reloading all at the same time. Not going to work like that. Only so many are going to be loaded at a time and I believe it's going to take like two or three minutes for you to fully load your torpedo tubes if not much longer than that so that's going to be a little frustrating because that's, that's a very long load time and the ship is a cruiser now before it was a destroyer and the armor on it is incredibly thin but now it also has a citadel where it can just get absolutely blapped off the map and yeah, so the ship itself probably isn't going to be all that great. But the real reason it's on this list is because of the event. The event that we're seeing here with the Kitakami is something that Wargaming has been pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing the entirety of this year. And that's this, this idea or this movement to try and strip the players of as much resources as they possibly can. All the auctions we've had throughout the year, think about it. All of the, um, well not all of the, the, the two Salvage for Victory events that we've gotten so far. The Champagne, now the Kitakami. I'm betting yeah, we're going to be getting more of that in the future. Because Wargaming is trying to, again, get as many resources as I can out of your port. Why? Because, well... If you have all these resources and you're just sitting on piles and piles of them and you're using these resources to get items in the game, obviously, one, if you have a mountain of them, you're not playing enough, right? Because why would I want to play to grind anything if I have all the coal that I need or if I have all the steel that I need or if I have all the research bureau points that I need? I'm just waiting for the next thing to drop so I can get it and maybe play it a little bit and just, you know, either not play the game as much as Wargaming would like me to or move on with my life. And two, as well, you're not buying, you know, you're not buying stuff if you have the resources to obtain them for free. So Wargaming is doing their damnedest to remove as many resources as they can all at once, especially from the veteran players that are still sticking around. But again, because they're veteran players and have mountains of resources, aren't spending money. At least that's my theory. And again, as you take a look back through the year, look at all the auctions, all the events where you can exchange resources, all the um, slow, 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 like kind of closing off of a steady flow of free resources into uh, players' accounts. I mean, we got rid of free XP this year. Uh, well, free XP ships, I should say. We got rid of free, X free XP ships this year. Why? Because you can slap a couple of economic bonuses on your ship that many veteran players have mountains of and you can grind out two or three million free xp really if you're really dedicated in a couple of weeks can't have that you know so we transition to coal coal is a resource that board gaming can control the flow of a lot better than free xp because you can earn coal from the daily coal containers and then they can set the amount that you can earn in uh ranked and other events and such so yeah funny how that all works right but again, that's just a theory, if you will. But yes, Kitakami, my opinion, definitely the top ship of the year in terms of, again, showing and representing what's going off in the game in this year of 2023. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What are your top five ships in terms of, again, representing what happened in the game this year or even, you know, what's going to happen or the direction that the game's going in, like I 
did with the 4501 and the Colossus. Again, just let me know in the comments down below. Hope you guys have a great Monday and a great rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.